my son was declared dead in the womb. How old is he now? 40. So 41 years ago, he was declared dead in the womb. And something rose up. The Spirit of God rose up inside of me. And just simply, the doctor showed me the sonogram. He showed me the evidence. He said, the fetus is dead. And he went on to explain what would be happening next. And something rose up inside of me and said, no, no. Now, that didn't come from me. That just, I, I, know, I know me well enough. That came from the spirit within me. No was what came out. And that no was a birthplace of faith. And we did not go back to that doctor. I didn't even tell my wife what he said. I just said, stay in bed. You'll be fine. And she was. And so nine months and two weeks, she was two weeks late, gave birth to a perfect baby boy. He's now 40, soon to be 41 years old. And that's an example of a miracle based upon the quickening of the Holy Spirit. It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Barry Bennett, and we're going to be discussing his brand new book, He Healed Them All, Accessing God's Grace for Divine Health and Healing. Barry, it's a true honor. Welcome to the show. Hey, Sean. Thank you so much. I'm really uh, privileged to be with you and get to share about this great topic. Well, Barry, it's been a couple of months since we hung out in person, and my gosh, things have really changed. I'm curious, in terms of life in Colorado, how is it different since I was there in January? Are you guys shut down? You all stuck at home? What's going on? Yeah, my wife and I just went to get a hamburger and had to eat in the parking lot. So it's uh, pretty much like everywhere else. We're shut down. School physically is shut down, though we are still having school electronically. But yeah, life has slowed down quite a bit. I've been in the house way too much. I can relate, and I don't have an excuse. I work at home, so things feel pretty normal. Going out to the grocery store is kind of a sketchy experience. Here in Illinois, the government is mandated, like the checkout lines have like sneeze guards in front of the cashiers so you don't you know, infect the cashiers. They're starting to limit like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's X number of people per thousand square feet of the store. So there's long lines even waiting to go into a grocery store. So shopping is kind of weird. But other than that, I guess for me, life feels relatively normal at this yeah. point. But enough about the coronavirus. We're going to talk about your book, which will give everybody hope for healing. That's where we'll go instead. Amen. I know in the context of this interview, Barry, you are going to be new to some of the viewers, some of the listeners. So I'd like to start things off with a little bit of your origin story. So for people who just haven't met you before, they're encountering you for the first time, what are a few things they need to know about your work in ministry? Okay, great, Sean. Yeah, I was born again in 1972 when I was a junior at Texas A&M University, and I graduated from Christ for the Nations in Dallas in 1978. I've been involved in some kind of ministry now for 47 years. I've been on the go. We were briefly missionaries in Mexico in 1978. We did Cambodian refugee ministry in inner city Dallas for a couple of years in uh, the 80s. We were missionaries to Guatemala for 10 months, where we learned Spanish in 1989. Then we were missionaries in Chile for 12 years, all through the 90s up into 2001. And I was a pastor for eight of those years. And we came back in Dallas. I had a Spanish Bible college for five years. And I've been with Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College now for almost 13 years. And I'm an instructor in the Bible school. Well, thanks for giving us an overview of the journey that brought you to where you are today. I know there are people listening to us right now who doubt that God still heals today. I know some people have the perspective of that, the healing work of the Holy Spirit that's been shuttered and boarded up. It's not for this season. But from your perspective, is God very much healing today? The question I would ask is God still saving people today? And what I go through in the book is showing that redemption and the cross dealt with the entire situation of man and Adam's sin. So whatever Adam's sin unleashed, Jesus has dealt with and more than dealt with on the cross. And so if we're talking about the impact of sin, well, death and sickness came from that decision that Adam made on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He unleashed the evil in the world. He unleashed sickness. He unleashed death. And so when we understand what the cross means, that it is redeeming us from the power of sin, and one of the fruits of sin is sickness, then yes, healing is still very much a part of the redemptive work of Jesus. And sometimes it's hard for people to grasp that. They understand forgiveness, that if someone prays to be forgiven and prays to be born again, 
Most people have no problem believing that is taking place. But if I take it into the realm of healing, then they say, well, if it be his will. But they don't use that context when they're talking about salvation, but they will when they talk about healing. I'd like to press into a little bit more of kind of the theology worldview aspect of sickness and healing. Obviously, sickness and disease, it's a reality of our human experience. I think a lot of people fall into the ditch of thinking God is to blame, that God is just all controlling and he's making us sick to some greater purpose or some greater endpoint, if you will. But in terms of ailments and sickness coming upon people, I'd like you to expand maybe a little bit more on what are the forces at work that bring sickness into our bodies? Well, again, going back to Adam's sin, we've unleashed the death cycle, so to speak, and everything that follows in the trail of that, all corruption, all loss, suffering, tragedy, sickness obviously is included. All of that had a beginning point. And so when we begin to then attribute sickness to God in the sense that we say, well, God is using this to teach me something, I think we've missed the bigger picture. Jesus came to set us free from these things, not to use them against us. The way he teaches us and perfects us, we find in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, he uses his word to perfect, to instruct, to exhort, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly equipped. So the word is our teacher. And then we have in John 16, the Holy Spirit is sent to teach us and to guide us into all truth. And so when we say that God uses sickness or God uses tragedy or God uses suffering or God uses the coronavirus, what we're basically saying is the word and the spirit aren't enough. And that's where I have a real problem. Either the word and the spirit are enough to thoroughly equip us for every good work and perfect us, or they're not. And something I say frequently is if sickness and tragedy are your teachers, you're in the wrong kingdom. You need to get your, your heart into the kingdom of God and realize how we have been equipped to live a victorious life, to live a life free from the power of sin and free from the power of sickness. Well, I think one of the ways we can help the listeners, the viewers today to really connect with the reality of healing and why it's possible today is to connect them with some stories, with some testimonies. So Barry, I'd love to have you share some of your own personal experiences, how you've seen healing show up in your own life and in the life of your family. And also, how has that shown up in your ministry as you've been ministering to others through the years? How has healing shown up there as well? All right. Well, let me give you a couple of examples. One is uh, my son was declared dead in the womb. How old is he now? 40. So 41 years ago, he was declared dead in the womb. And something rose up. The Spirit of God rose up inside of me. And just simply, the doctor showed me the sonogram. He showed me the evidence. He said, the fetus is dead. And he went on to explain what would be happening next. And something rose up inside of me and said, no, no. Now, that didn't come from me. That just, I, I, know, I know me well enough. That came from the spirit within me. No was what came out. And that no was a birthplace of faith. And we did not go back to that doctor. I didn't even tell my wife what he said. I just said, stay in bed, you'll be fine. And she was. And so nine months and two weeks, she was two weeks late. Gave birth to a perfect baby boy. He's now 40, soon to be 41 years old. And that's an example of a miracle based upon the quickening of the Holy Spirit. So when people say, well, maybe he will, maybe he won't. If God is still healing anybody, there's got to be a spiritual principle or spiritual law that sustains it. God is not a God of whims. God is a God of his word. He's given us his word. Another example is just maybe three years ago, I went into the dermatologist because I had some spotting on my face. And so he froze those things off and he looked in my ear and found one and he said, this looks different. And so he did a biopsy, called me a few days later and said, in your ear, that is cancer, skin cancer. I have to do surgery and the surgery will be radical enough that when I'm done, you'll have to have plastic surgery. Well, none of that sounded too delightful to me. And once again, inside of me, there just came a no. Sometimes no is the most powerful word we have in, in, in our walk of faith. When we hear negative reports, no is a powerful word. I said no to that. I told my wife and she said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm not going to do it. I just have a faith has been birthed in my heart to not do it. And I'm not against doctors. I've gone to doctors at other times. I've had faith for what they've asked or said. This time, no. I got a letter about a week or two later, certified mail, demanding that I have the surgery and the post-plastic surgery. And again, I just tore it up. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And I just believed God because when faith is born in your heart, you don't have to ask everybody else what they think. 
when you have faith in your heart, you know. You don't go around asking people's opinions, what do you think about this? And so I knew that I knew. It took a year for that place in my ear to clear up. But over the course of 12 months, it completely vanished by the power of God, I'll have to say. And it's been two and a half years, still perfectly healed. Now, had I submitted to the facts of the moment, I would have had a different looking ear, perhaps would have been healed, but it wouldn't have been the same thing that it was. And so I could share other stories. But in my ministry in Chile as a pastor, people would come for prayer all the time. We never had a person come into our church with cancer that did not get healed, even bone cancer. I mean, we had some dramatic healings. And what I've discovered is in my particular ministry, it's the power of the word. When the word is understood, when the power of the word is released into someone's spirit, faith is born in them to receive healing. Other people may have miracle ministries and gifts of healing. That's not my gift. My gift is teaching. And that's why this book is full of teaching. When people understand in a clear way what the word actually says and what God has actually promised, faith is born in their hearts and healing results. In terms of somebody listening or watching who says, I just don't really have a lot of faith for healing that it's even possible. Are there any practical ways we can press in or ask God to increase our faith level for healing? I think one of the ways we do that is by the sharing of testimonies, which we've already done today. But on a real practical level, how can somebody press in to increase their faith for healing? What I do is I go to the Gospels and I look at Jesus' ministry of healing. I spend a lot of time imagining those ministries, seeing the people, seeing the suffering, seeing Jesus moved with compassion, looking at the different ways he brought healing. And it says he brought healing to all who came to him. That's why the title of the book is He Healed Them All. Everyone that came to him got healed. Everyone that stayed home didn't. And so there is a proactive part in this that we need to play. Now, they were seeking a physical Jesus. But we have the word of God. And Proverbs 4 talks about give attention to his word for it is life to you and health to all your flesh. The word itself carries the life and the power of God. If we would approach the word not just as a book, but if we would approach it as God speaking to us, whether it's talking about healing or not, it carries inherently within it all the life of God for whatever need you may have. That's why I spend so much time teaching and trying to explain and help people understand. Because for me, and the way I minister healing is the healing is in the word. Psalm 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and healed them. Jesus spoke the word and they were healed. And so the word carries the nature of God, carries the healing power of God. And that's my approach. So also for the person listening or viewing us today, their faith is to the point where they believe in healing. And maybe they're feeling prompted to pray for somebody else. Also at a real practical level, what might it look kind of basic step-by-step for them to pray and intercede for another person who needs healing? That's a great question because I've had a lot of experiences praying for people. And there are times when I felt like I was God's man of the hour. I'll use the word, I felt that I had power. I felt that I was full of faith and I saw nothing happen. And there have been other times when I was tired, I'd been ministering for a couple of hours. I was done. I wanted to go home and somebody else wanted prayer, and I would pray the obligatory prayer without any enthusiasm at all or any feeling, we can say, and they got healed. And so what I realized is that even if I'm not feeling faith, if one of us is in faith, and apparently the person believed enough in my prayer, even though I may not have at that moment, but they received based on their faith in that contact point. And so either I'm going to be the one that's going to be in faith ministering and imparting, or they're going to be the one that's in faith receiving. One of us has to be in faith. But if two of us are both in faith, then we have a good connection. Well, Barry, we've only touched on a handful of the subjects that you cover in the book. Before we move to wrapping up, I'd love to give you an opportunity just to share any other topics or themes that you want to make sure we fit into this interview. Well, I spend a lot of time in the book talking about the cross, talking about redemption. I think that's important to have a clear foundation about why we should expect healing. A lot of people will approach me and say, well, why isn't everybody healed? And my response to that is, why aren't all Christians walking in holiness? In other words, we've been forgiven. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. The power of sin has been broken. And yet, you probably would agree with me that many Christians still sin, right? And so, 
any question you bring up with regard to healing, just flip it and put it in regard to salvation. There's a lot of saved people that aren't acting like it. And there's a lot of healed people that aren't acting like it. And so just as righteousness has been imputed to us, so has healing. Healing has been imputed. It's our right. It's our inheritance. But not all of us believe it or not all of us have been taught about it. And so we're not expecting it. So I cover that quite a bit. I talk about the attitude of health and healing, the power of expectation. I go into faith. What is real faith? Faith is not mental. Faith is spiritual. Faith is of the heart. It's not of the head. The head needs to be in agreement, but faith with the heart man believes. So we talk a lot about that. I talk about why people are sick. What is it that got us into this place of needing healing? A lot of people need healing. People watching or listening right now need healing. And so why are we sick? And so I cover a whole gamut of subjects. And my part is to bring hope to people, to bring understanding to people, and to get them into a place where they can say, this is for me. I can have faith in God. I can believe he is faithful, and I can receive healing. Barry, before we wrap up, I'd love for you to take a few moments to pray for the listeners. Would you do that for us? Absolutely. Amen. Father, we do pray for all that are listening, all that are watching. Father, I speak the power of your word and the quickening of your spirit into every heart, that hearts would be open to consider new ideas, new things, new verses, new scripture, new truth, perhaps, in this area of healing and health, and that we would all see your greatness, your goodness, your love, how much you love us, that you are not the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. You are the one that comes to give us abundant life. And our health is a part of that life. Father, we thank you that your word is true. Your word carries your nature. Your word carries life. We receive it now, Father. We receive truth now to set us free. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. And Barry, for the listeners who'd like to connect with you, find out more about your ministry, find out more about your books, where can we connect with you on the web? Okay, great. I do have a web page. It's uh, www.barrybennett.org, O-R-G. And then I probably even have more traffic on a Facebook page, Barry Bennett Public Figure. That's a Facebook term. Barry Bennett Public Figure is my Facebook page where I have teachings that come out every single morning, 365 days a year. And I'm also now doing an online Bible study every Wednesday at 2.30 on the Karis Bible College Facebook page. And so there's a number of ways which I'm getting the word out. Well, like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Barry and pick up your own copy of the book as well. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Barry Bennett. Once again, our book today was He Healed Them All, Accessing God's Grace for Divine Health and Healing. Again, if you'd like to connect with Barry and find out more, a great place to start is his website. You can find that over at barrybennett.org. And Barry, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been a great pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. All right, Sean, thank you so much. See you again soon.